if you have no struggles in your life, that means God is absent. If your life is easy and you have no struggles, you have no challenges, that means you're bound for hell. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, you've spoken recently on the importance of suffering. While I agree, I have a hard time keeping a positive and abundant mindset. I'm working long hours, taking on different challenges, training hard, and taking very little leisure time and social activity. This leaves me feeling drained and puts me in a negative place. I believe positivity is important for success in business. How do suffering and positivity work together and how can I stay positive? Uh, so the very first thing that you would want to consider is your level of gratitude. This is amazing, right? Because it's easy to focus on all the things that suck, but there's a reason why we're doing the things that suck. And instead of thinking about or, or phrasing it like I have to go to work, right? Like I get, I have to go to work. Think of it this way, rephrase it, even the way you say it by, by uh, saying it, like I get to go to work. Why do you get to go to work? I get to go to work because I get to earn money so that I can take care of myself. And I'm grateful that I have this money so that I can buy food. I can put a roof over my head so I can buy clothes so I can do the things I, I want, right? You can say, I have to train hard, right? I'm training hard. Or you get to train hard. Why do you get to train hard? You get to train hard so that you can challenge your muscles and they'll grow stronger and you'll have a better looking body and you'll have more athletic prowess. Your testosterone levels will go up. Right. So you're taking on different challenges. You said I'm taking on difficult challenges. You get to take on difficult challenges. Why? So that you can overcome obstacles. You could be triumphant. You could build virtue. You could build value. You could be a character, a strong character in your life. Right. So it's not about suffering is not the virtue. It's about holy suffering. Holy suffering is suffering in silence and gratitude. It's funny if you if you look into the Catholic faith, there's uh, there's something that they will call um, victim souls. A lot of saints, if you look up like the saints, you know, saints of the Catholic Church, uh, they all talk about victim souls. And these are people who got the grace. They, they consider this a grace. Like, for example, St. Padre Pio had like his he, he had wounds in his hands. And he was almost like a little crippled. A lot of the saints, a lot of the greatest saints were victim souls. And these are people, the reason why they're chosen as victim souls is so that they could raise the consciousness of the planet by bearing the suffering with, with joy, with gratitude. You know, there's, there's, there are graces associated with suffering. And so they would see it as a benefit. And I remember reading one Orthodox, I remember reading an Orthodox Catholic, uh, Orthodox Christian uh, book, Greek Orthodox. And the guy was talking about, it was, must've been another saint. You know, these guys, there's so many saints. If you want to know about living a life of virtue, read the lives of the saints. And this one saint, maybe he was like an elder, maybe it was elder Pasio or something. Uh, he was talking about how, if you have no struggles in your life, that means God is absent. If your life is easy and you have no struggles, you have no challenges, that means you're bound for hell. That means God doesn't see it fit to lay challenges on your shoulder. It's just like a coach, like a coach. Some coaches just might not take on a client because they're like, this guy has no potential. So the guy, if he doesn't take you on, what do you do? You live a life of leisure and luxury. But if he takes you on, if that coach takes you on, it means he sees potential in you. And you know what that coach is going to do when he gets you? He's going to whoop your ass. He's going to work you. He's going to work you. He's going to work you hard. He's going to challenge you. He's not going to be nice. But why is he being that way with you? It's like, oh, that's, this guy got potential, so I'm not going to let up on him. And God does the same thing. If he sees that you got potential, he's going he's gonna to put it on you. He's going to work you hard like a coach. That was one of my very first conceptions of God in life when I was trying to understand God. This was 24 years ago. I used to think of God as the, as the coach in the sky, the big coach in the sky. And if we live our life uh, free from challenge, that means the coach just ain't paying attention to me. The coach is not doesn't see potential in me. But if we live a life of challenge, that means the coach is pushing me and the coach sees the potential in my life, right? And so if you watch some of my old like motivational videos, I have this one called Lift That Shit or Die Trying. Lift That Shit or Die Trying. And it's all about 
all the challenges of life. They're like barbells. They're like plates coming on a barbell. All the challenges of life. And the, the joy of being able to lift it, to overcome it, to grow stronger through it. There's a tremendous amount of, of growth available for you. So, you know, working the long hours, taking different difficult challenges, training hard, having very little leisure, you can offer that up as penance. You offer it up as struggle for your salvation and you thank God for it. It's just a perspective. It's a way of looking at things, right? You have to choose, you have to, look, we're all brainwashed. Not all brainwashing is good. There's certain brainwash and you ask me, how do I, you say positivity is important for success, right? How do suffering and positivity work together? The whole thing is be positive about the suffering. See the suffering as a gateway to your ascension. Be thankful for adversity. Be grateful in adversity. Be generous in prosperity, right? Because that's the challenge when things are good. When things are good, the challenge then becomes, and this is maybe what God is, is looking for, for those of us he's not pressing hard because there are seasons for everything. If you're not being pressed hard, basically what he's asking you to do is be generous it's like okay let me see how this guy handles prosperity because that's a challenge too it's a challenge to handle prosperity it i would say it is a probably more of a challenge to handle comfort and prosperity that's why so many men are suffering with depression and anxiety it's part of the reason because our lives are so easy that it's sickening it makes us sick how sweet it is it rots our teeth how easy life is and it's de and it's depressing and so that is a challenge that uh, that that causes uh, that forces us to stop thinking about ourselves. You're not that important. Even though you have all these things, you're better giving it away, right? Being generous. Get it off your plate, share it, help others, right? That's the way you pass the challenge when things are good. Remember that because you're going to you're going to come out of this, bro. You're going to come out of these challenging hard times, guaranteed, because everything happens in, 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 in seasons. That's another thing you need to remember. You're not going to be working like this forever, right? It's not going to be the same forever. Be grateful for the season that you're in, right? But then be generous when the season ends and you're, you know, you're, you're li living a little bit higher up on the hog. <laughs> living a little higher up on the hog, use that as an opportunity to, to, to triumph as well by being generous this is a tough one tougher it's tougher it's tougher i'm talking from my own experience i have to actively be generous it's not my nature i have to actively do it right like giving to charities like i i used to try to give to charity every month but then i would like i don't want to write this check so you know what i do i just put it on automate automate auto bill and it goes to the St. Vincent de Paul Society. That's where I, you know, I give my money to. I give my money to. They help uh, people who like recently lost their jobs find a new home. Like if, if you lose your job and you have a family, and there's nothing you can do, right? It's freaking COVID, right? Million people lost their jobs because COVID. Um, they help you get into a home right away. Like they help you transition. Okay, let's get this guy into an apartment so that he can find a job and get his get his whole life back together. I thought that was a good thing. That's what I wanted to. So I, you know, that's where I'm generous in a way, right? So you got to find ways to make that, to make that a, uh, a grace, be a blessing in that way too, man. So anyway, I hope that helps, dude. Ain't going to last forever. Be grateful in adversity and generous in prosperity. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students where among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. We talk all things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. Me and my team will get back to you the details to see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.